Hi class and welcome to our next video lesson. What we're talking about today is modeling real world data using scatter plots. So this is an important lesson to, to pay very close attention to. One reason is because this is the first lesson that doesn't have a lot of, re a lot of review in it. Our first three, four lessons, I'm sure you guys remember all that stuff from intermediate algebra, but now this is brand new material. So make sure you're paying very close attention. We're using real world data and the biggest thing that we're doing with this real world data is we're making predictions about what could possibly happen in the future. So this happens all the time in the real world. We look at past data and then we look at trends and think, oh, I wonder if this trend continues, what's going to happen 15 years from now? or what happens 50 years from now, so on and so forth. So this is very valuable information. Make sure you pay very close attention. Here's our first one. Fuel efficiency. The table below shows the average fuel efficiency in miles per gallon of new cars manufactured during the years listed. So what happened here is in 1960, they made these automobiles, and the average car got 15.5 miles to the gallon. Interestingly enough, 10 years later, 1970, it went down, it got 14.1 miles to the gallon. So there must have been some hiccup there, but since then, every year, our miles to the gallon have gone up and up and up. So uh, as you can maybe guess, in 2000, it's more than 26.9, and by the year 2010, it got even higher. Technology has been improving so quickly, so with that improvement came a lot of improvements with automobiles and stuff like that. So as technology increases, fuel efficiency has gone up as well. So what we're looking at here is we are looking at this information on an XY coordinate grid right here. Okay? So as you can see, we have 1960, 15.5. That point is right there. We have 1970 and 14.1. That point is right here, and so on and so forth. So th those blue dots represent this information. So now the next thing that you don't have on your graph paper is I want you to draw this line right here. What this is called, class, is it's called a line of best fit. A line of best fit is a line that best represents linear data. This data, I know that all four of these points aren't exactly on a straight line, but they represent a linear function, so we're going to draw a line that best represents the data. As you can see when we drew this line right here, it's supposed to go right through the heart of your data. So I, there's a point below the line, there's a point above the line, it goes through two points, so it represents your data. Listen very closely to these words that I'm going to say right now. When you draw your line of best fits, you must, must, must go through two points. Okay, your line of best fit has to go through two points. Now, I'm sure some of you might be thinking right now, well, Mr. Berge, I might think this is a line of best fit from there to there. And you are absolutely right. There could be one point below your line, one point above your line, so on and so forth. Um, but if you have that on a test, I'm not going to count an incorrect. Okay, I'm going to count that right because you're doing the process correct even if we have a little bit of different answers on our test as long as I could see your line of best fit and the two points that you go through you're going to get the right answer. But for the sake of consistency let's all go through this point right here and this point right here so that all of our notes look the exact same. So what we're going to do here now class is I want to find the equation of this line. This is my line of best fit so this is what I think is going to be trending with automobiles as years go by and and what the fuel efficiency is going to be. This is the line that I think the trend is going to go to. So I want the equation of this line. And the way we find the equation of a line is we have to first get it into point slope form. Well, I don't know what the slope is. So now there's my first step. Let's find the slope. Well, I know my, new, my two points. One is right here, which is this point, 1960 and 15.5. My second point then is this one right here, which is the 1980 and the 22.6. Let's find the slope of these two points. So it's going to be x1, y1, x2, y2. It's the change in y, so subtract the y's, 22.6 minus 15.5 over x2 minus x1, which is 1980 minus 1960. Finding the slope, we got ourselves 
7.1 over 20. 7.1 over 20. Now, usually I like slope in fractions, but with this lesson class, I want your slope to be in a decimal form. It's easier to manipulate numbers when we have it in a decimal form, and I want you to round to three decimal places. So when we do this, we get 0.355. So there's my slope. My slope is 0.355. So with this, I can now find the equation of this line by putting it into point slope form. I have my slope. I have a point. You could use either one of these two. I usually use the first one. So now let's put it into point slope form with our slope and our point. So point slope form looks like this. y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. So y minus the y coordinate, which is 15.5. That equals our m, which is 0 0.355, times the quantity x minus the x coordinate, which is 1960. I want our answers in slope-intercept form, so let's change this into slope-intercept form. First, let's distribute, getting rid of those parentheses. So that equals 0 0.355x minus 1960 times 0.355 is the number 695.8. 695.8. So now let's add this 15.5, and we have ourselves slope intercept form. So y equals 0 0.355x minus 680.3. And here's my answer in slope-intercept form. Now, class, you might be thinking to yourselves, Mr. Berge, what the world is this even good for? What do we even know about this information? And it does look like a bunch of mumble-jumble right now, but we have to put it into perspective of our data. The y variable is miles per gallon. Here it is, miles to the gallon. Our x variable, that is the years, right here. So if I want to make a prediction, let's say I'm going to buy a car in the year 2020. Okay, so in 2020, I want to buy myself a brand new car. What should I expect to see for miles to the gallon if technology continues to increase at the rate that it has been? Well, if I want to know my miles per gallon, if I want to know what Y is, when I know the year is 2020, that's my X variable. Well, let's put 2020 in for my X variable. So what is y when 0.355 is multiplied by 2020, and then I subtract 680.3? I want you to show that work, and then from there on, you could just multiply and subtract all in one step, and then you could just give me your final answer. So in the year 2020, what should I expect to pay in miles to uh, what should I expect to get in miles to gallon? If we take 0.355 times 2020, we get 717.1. Subtracting the 680.3, we have ourselves 36.8 miles per gallon. So this is very useful in thinking, boy, if I look at past information, I could predict about what is going to happen in the future. Very valuable stuff. We're going to do that two more times to get some good practice on it. I'm also going to show you how to do it in your graphing calculator. But what I really want you to know is these steps. Once you get your information, Put it on a graph. Draw your line of best fit. Once you draw your line of best fit, you find the slope, and then you put it into point slope form. Once you put it in a point slope form, you change it into slope intercept form. And once you put it in slope intercept form, now we can make a prediction. So those are the steps that we're going to go through. Let's try it again here now for problem number two. So we are going to use this data. Let's get rid of this thing. We're going to use this data here to make our next prediction on seeing what happens when x is 10. So our first step, let's put all this on our grid. 1, 1, 3, 5, 4, 7. And you guys can continue the rest of the way. So if I'm looking at this, this looks pretty linear, does it not? 
I want to draw a line of best fit for my next step. And it needs to go through at least two points. This one looks like it could go several points, but I at least need to go through two. So take your straight edge and draw a line that goes through at least two of the points. I think I'm just going to start right here. And it's looking like maybe right about there. Okay, I have one, two, three, four points that are on the line. This one's a little bit below. This one's a little bit above. So I'm going to use this as my line of best fit. Once again, class, on our next chapter test, if your work doesn't look exactly like my answer key does, you can still get full credit. We just might have used two different points, and that's OK. I'm just going to use these first two, the two closest ones. It looks like it goes through, through those two points. You could use the first and the third, or the second and the fourth, or any combination of those. But we just need two points, because we've got to find slope. So we're using 1, 1, and we're using 3, 5. Let's find the slope of that. So my slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So 4 halves, we get a slope of 2. With our slope being 2, we're now going to put it into point slope form. We'll just use this point and this slope. So we have y minus the y coordinate equals m times the quantity x minus the x coordinate. Putting this into slope, into slope intercept form, y minus 1 equals 2x minus 2. And so for slope intercept form, we would get y equals 2x minus 1. And there we have it in slope intercept form. So what we just found, class, is we found, I'm just checking my work here to make sure I'm doing this right. I just found the equation of this line. It is y equals 2x minus 1. So what I want to do here now is I want to find what happens when x is 10. How can I make the prediction when x is 9 and then x is 10 way over here? What's going to happen to my graph? Well, let's find out. When x is 10, what is y? 2 times 10 minus 1. 2 times 10 is 20. 20 minus 1. We can say y is 19. And there we have it. We have our answer. We can predict that when x is 10, y is 19 going with this trend. Now, like I said, our answers won't might not be exactly the same, all depending on what two points we pick. However, when we use our graphing calculator, our answers will be exactly the same. What our graphing calculator does is it averages all of these points away from a certain line, and it gets a straight and perfectly linear line that best represents our data. So at this time, take out your graphing calculators, please. I'm going to show you how to do this using our graphing calculator. So here's mine. The first button you're going to push is you're going to press stat. It is the third column, second row. So it's right there, stat. OK, now go over one column. Sorry, sorry, never mind. Stay right here and go to edit. So press enter. Now you see all these lists, L1, L2, L3, L4, L5. That stands for list 1, list 2, list 3, list 4, list 5, so on and so forth. I have data in list 1. If you have any data, here's what I want you to do. I want you to press clear and then press the down arrow. And boom, it's gone. Do not press delete. Make sure you press clear and then press down, and that empties your list. So what you're going to want to do from this point, class, is you're going to want to enter in all of your information. So under our X list, we had the numbers 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, and 8. Let's put those in. 1, enter. 3, enter. So on and so forth. 4, 6, 7, and 8. Do not put in 10 right now. If you put in 10, we don't have a Y value for that. So we're just going to keep that left open. So do not put anything in for 10. List 2 is going to be my Y list. So put in 1, 5, 7, 11, 12, and 15. So you should always have the same number of X values, values as you do Y values. So there they are in list 1 and list 2. What we're going to do is we're going to create a line of best fit. So go again to stat. Now go over to calculate a line of best fit. It's also known as a linear regression line, so it's number 4. So scroll down to number 4 and press Enter. Now we get this. X list, Y list. We want our X list 
to be what we just put in, which was list one. So some of you might have it defaulted there as list one. If you do not, press second one, and there you have it in L1. My Y list, we put our Y values into list two. So I'm going to press second two to get it into list two. Don't do anything with the frequency list or the store regre regression. Go down to calculate and press enter. And here's what our calculator did. It put it into y equals mx plus b form. They use the letter a. I don't know why. But this right here means slope. It's our m. y equals mx plus b. y equals ax plus b. a is now our slope m. And b, this is our y-intercept. Okay? So our slope here, our calculator, which is perfect, found to be 1.938, round to three decimal points. And our calculator B got to be a negative 0 0.866. Once again, round to three decimal places. So going back to our smart notebook file, I used my calculator. And if you want to write this down, I'll write this down just so that you guys can have it. On our calculator, you go to stat, and then edit, and then enter information. Once you do that, then you go to stat, scroll over one to calc, and then you go to number four, which is the linear regression line. Okay, and then you do your L1, L2, so on and so forth. And then we get our line of best fit, which our calculator found to be y equals ax plus b, which is y equals 1.938x minus 0 0.866. So if you kind of compare the line that we found and compare this line, this slope is 1.938. Our slope was 2. So 1.93, 2, they're pretty close. Here we got a y-intercept of a negative 1, and our calculator got a y-intercept of a negative 0.866. Once again, pretty close. Our calculator is perfect. We are not. So if you have to get it exactly perfect, you got to use your graphing calculator. So let's finish this one through now. Let's find the prediction what happens when x is 10. So y equals 1.938 times 10 minus 0 0.866. When you do all that work, you get the number y equals 18.514. And there's our answer. Okay, last one, problem number three. You guys try this one on your own. Okay, pause the video, work on it all by yourself here. So we're going to go 5, 9, 10, 17, 20, 22, 25, 30, 35, 38, 40, 44. You know, class, I changed my mind. We're going to go over this one in class. I want you to still continue working through this one all by yourself. Come tomorrow with it all done so that we can kind of go through some, some of these all together because I'm sure we're going to get all different answers because we're probably going to use different points. So try this one on your own. Come ready to discuss it tomorrow when you get to class.